Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY video here about good old Athena. It's crunch time here in the shed. I only have another couple of weeks left until Athena gets moved outside. And as you can see, I still have a lot of work ahead of myself before she's ready for that. I've been hard at work over the last few weeks, fairing the cabin top, working on the cockpit, doing all sorts of prep work in preparation of applying primer and then finally top coat. Now, if I'm to meet my deadline of moving out of the shed by the end of October, well then I desperately need to apply primer this weekend. I am very excited about painting the entire deck. For one, I think Athena is going to look super spiffy. And also, I've never spray painted anything before, but it's something I've always wanted to try. Now, I might be able to convince a fellow Danish DIYer and YouTuber to swing by and give me a little crash course in spray painting, which would be awesome because that would certainly improve my chances of not messing up the paint job completely. Sadly, there won't be any super cool spray painting going on in this video because I am going to use a boring old roller to apply the primer. But before I even get to that, as you can see, there are still tons of prep work to deal with. If you guys recall, the cockpit looked slightly different in the end of last weekend's video when I just finished laying up a little bit of glass to help stabilize the surface. Since then, I've applied a touch of fairing compound just to fill out some of the low spots that I got from removing the old teak deck. The horizontal surfaces here in the cockpit do not need to be perfect. They're going to get covered by teak or some kind of synthetic alternative. I just wanted to make sure that everything was reasonably smooth. Yesterday I fared the transition between the cockpit combing and the deck. I did that using a little bit of fairing compound and a spoon and it seemed to work out really well. And that's awesome news because that means I can now deal with the top edge up here. Bring out the Franken bit. Ta-da! Later in this video, I'm going to be making another custom shaped round over bit for the edges up here on the cabin top. This one is not the right angle for those, so this one is only good for the cockpit combing. I've already adjusted the depth of cut and the angle, so yeah, let's get started. Wow, if there ever was anything that qualified as spiffy, I think it is this. I am 100% satisfied. Never have I ever taken so much pride in a rounded over corner. I'm gonna get back to more DIY fun in just a second. But first, I wanna thank you guys. I've been uploading videos to YouTube for around four years now. In fact, the anniversary was about a month and a half ago. I want to thank all of you for staying tuned and coming back every Sunday for glorious, glorious sanding or boring fairing or all the other somewhat tedious stuff I do here aboard Athena. And in particular, I want to thank my patrons who help support the making of these videos. Because of my patrons, it is very likely that I within a year will be able to do YouTube as a full-time job. Now that should significantly speed up the process of refitting Athena and it should make the videos a lot more entertaining because I'll have more time to put into them. Now that would simply not even be remotely possible without the help of my patrons. As a thank you to existing and any new patrons in certain tiers, I will be sending out some super spiffy custom sail life stickers. We have a big box of these sitting at Ava's place just waiting to get shipped all over the world. I am very excited to see photos of these stickers all over the planet. Now, if you want to get in on the sticker action and you're not already a patron in the three, five or $10 tiers, head over to patreon.com slash saylife and check it out. And again, I want to thank all of you patrons or not for staying tuned. Thank you so much, guys. Hi guys, it is a few days later, also known as Friday afternoon, and uh, things have taken a little bit of a turn. I was expecting to have until the end of the month here in the shed, but it turns out the owner of the shed would like to get his boat in here around the 26th. 
And I had the weekend of the 29th as a little bit of a buffer in my plan. So I'm now bufferless. I've come up with a new plan. It is gonna be tight and it's gonna be a lot of work, but if I'm able to stick to that plan, I should still be able to get the deck painted before I need to vacate the premises. But I do need to engage turbo mode. Over the last couple of days, I've done just that. And for instance, the cockpit combings here should be all the way done. They just need a light final sanding to take care of the few imperfections I fared yesterday. That means I am done using the Franken bit here in the cockpit, which is awesome news because that means I can go ahead and get started on the cabin top. And that means making a new Franken bit. But uh, we're gonna save that for a little later today. First, there is something else I wanna get started on. I haven't fixed or fared the sole here in the cockpit yet. I gave it the lowest possible priority on my list because I figured I could always just build a little tent over the cockpit and take care of it later on. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and go for broke. The first step is going to be to get rid of all of this old paint. And for that, I am gonna utilize Oh Glorious Sanding, slightly less glamorous sister, Oh Scraping. <laughs> After a quick bit of scraping, a quick bit of sanding, and by that I mean a couple of hours, the cockpit sole is looking a lot better. In last weekend's video, I drilled some oversized holes and I filled those holes with thickened epoxy. Those holes are located where stuff is through bolted through the cabin sole, and the goal here is to prevent water from getting into the core of the sandwich construction. Let's go ahead and turn the spiffiness factor up on these little epoxy filled holes by adding a couple of layers of glass on top of each of them. First step is a visit from Mr. Angle Grinder. There's also a little bit of an issue with the top skin here. Last winter I found some voids between the fiberglass and the core and uh, that's what's going on here. So uh, let's get that fixed. Here's a little bit of a different angle and uh, here you can see that void and the fact that the top skin is just flapping around in the breeze. Just as with the voids I found last winter, these appear to be pretty deep. The correct fix here, of course, would be to keep grinding until you reach the end, but then I might as well replace the entire top skin in the sandwich construction, and I just don't have time to do that. I've injected thickened epoxy as deep into the voids as I could get it, and I've used a little bit of thickened epoxy here to take up some of the unevenness. I am gonna lay up new laminate in this area here because that's gonna be taking the load from the pedestal. Each of the holes now have a couple of layers of glass on them, and I've done laying up this bit of laminate here, so now I'm just gonna leave this alone for a couple of hours. I'm hoping the epoxy will be gelled enough that in a couple of hours I can apply a fairing compound on top of it. That way I can come back and sand tomorrow. And if it's not perfect, then I've got another shot at it. But Sunday, I do need to start applying primer. Instead of just sitting around waiting for epoxy to cure, which is just the distant cousin of sitting around and watching paint dry, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my attention to the Franken bit. I've adjusted the angle on the tiltable base to roughly match the angle of the cabin tub. I've also adjusted the depth of cut, but it does look like we need to trim the Franken bit a little bit. It is a tiny adjustment, so I doubt it's gonna show up on camera, but if I just hold this here, you can see that. Yep, we do need to trim it. This week, rather than taking a file to a spinning router bit, I'm gonna see if I can make the adjustments using my angle grinder. I feel like that might be a little bit safer, but uh, eh, who knows? I've got a little test here, and that is simply just to put a file on top of the router, turn the roundover bit, and when the edge of the roundover bit no longer touches the file, well, then we're good. I'm not going to lie, this is slightly terrifying because if I mess this up, well, then I don't have the time to fix it. So, fingers crossed. 
I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, pretty close to a complete success. It is not the same radius as in the cockpit because the angle changed, but it is uniform on the entire length of the cabin tub. And I think that's more important. Yep, this is a-okay with me. It is very, very late and I'm out of time for today, but I did manage to get fairing compound applied here in the cockpit. So that's awesome. But, uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. It is Saturday morning, also known as the very last day I've got for fixing any kind of mistakes. Come hell or high water, tomorrow I need to start applying primer. That means a big portion of today is going to be spent going over the entire boat with a fine-tooth comb. Who's excited to do some nitpicking? I know I am. <sighs> I think a good first step today would be to get rid of all of the junk up on the boat so that I can see what I've actually got to work with. Ta-da! Okay. Let's go ahead and see what remains on my to-do list. Starting from the forward end, I still have to round over this edge here, and that is going to be a manual process. I don't have a round over bit I can convert into a franken bit to take care of this, so I'm just going to have to do that by hand. I have some sanding to take care of up here, down here, and also here, 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 here and down here, plus a bazillion other places. So yeah, I better just go ahead and get started. What I'm about to do is gonna be pretty dang mind-numbingly boring. It is gonna be hours and hours of just sanding. The very least I can do is to make sure that I'm as comfortable as I can be while I'm doing it and that I'm entertained. The knee pads in my pants are long overdue for a replacement. This is the old paper thin one, and this is the new squishy one. This is gonna be awesome. Oh, yes. This is so much more comfortable. As far as the entertainment, well, I think I'll go with an episode of Reply All. It's about five hours later and things are, well, progressing. I've decided to take a little bit of a break from all the glorious sanding to do a rough fit of the new tiny port lights. There is one of these on each side of the cabin top right here in this hole here, but these are new and the uh, hole is from the old ones and I'm not sure the new ones is an exact match. So uh, let's go ahead and test. Ta-da! Hopefully in about a week and a half, I'll be able to put all the port lights back in. There is a lot of excess fairing compound here, so I'll just go ahead and remove that. Ta-da! I'm not going to lie, seeing this has me pretty excited. Just think, in a week and a half, Athena could be, well, rainproof again. In the interest of making life a little bit easier for future mess, I've gone ahead and test fitted every single port light just to make sure that there wasn't any kind of excess fairing compound getting in the way. I'd much rather go through the mess of removing that now than wait until the boat is painted. And as you might be able to see, there was quite a bit of excess fairing compound. Well, enough delightful procrastination. Back to glorious sanding here in the cockpit. I've 
decided to go ahead and remove these two handles here. In person they look very worn and also there were some non-stainless steel screws used that were starting to leak a little bit of rust so I figured it's better to get rid of them and uh, yeah I can always replace them with new handles. <laughs> Ah, shit. It is around 7.30 p.m. and I think I am finally done sanding with the exception of the forward edge here. All the blue tape you see are tiny little imperfections. I just want to go ahead and give a little bit of fairing compound tonight. But it's starting to look like I might be able to apply primer tomorrow. I've tried a bunch of stuff on this edge here. I've tried wrapping different shapes of wood in some sandpaper. I've tried foam, I've tried my big block here, I've tried drawing lines and using those as a guide. Um, but nothing has really worked all that well. So I think I'm just gonna eyeball it. By that, I mean, I'm gonna take a bite out of this edge here, keep it as uniform as I can, judging by the width of it. And then I'm just going to round that over and that will just have to be good enough. This doesn't actually look half bad, but I guess it'll be easier to judge tomorrow with the primer on here. I'm going to take care of those tiny imperfections that need just a little bit more fairing compound off camera. So uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning for just a tiny bit more sanding and then application of glorious primer. Good morning guys. It is Sunday morning. Today is the big day. Today I start painting. First though, there are a couple of hours worth of sanding to take care of. The guy that decided to use one component paint on the sole here in the cockpit should be subject to public lashings. It is incredibly difficult to get the stupid stuff out of all of these little corners here. And the two component paint I'm going to be using is going to dissolve this stuff. So I definitely want to get rid of it. To help myself out a little bit, I've soaked some paper towel in some of the thinner I'm going to be using for the primer. This stuff is primarily silene based and uh, it does soften up the one component paint quite a lot. If I never ever see a stupid three-way inside corner that needs sanding and prepping again, it'll be too soon. Well guys, this is it. I've reached the intersection between I want perfection and I cannot stand sanding another second. So I've gone ahead and vacuumed the entire deck. Next up is just to give everything a quick wipe down and then we can get to painting. For primer, I'm gonna be using Sigma Cover 280 from PPG. This is the base and here is the hardener. PPG doesn't really advertise their products a lot. I think they might be geared more towards professionals rather than DIY, but they are one of the world's biggest manufacturer of paint, so I think they know what they're doing. If we take this primer and compare it to, for instance, International's Interprotect, then this is roughly half the price. A four liter can of this stuff, which is well, basically the same as a gallon, is the equivalent of 87 US dollars. That's not bad. There are two reasons why I'm going to apply this primer. For one, I want my top coat to stick to the surface and also I want to protect the fairing compound from moisture. All the red or brownish areas you see here on the cabin top, those are fared with West Systems 105 Epoxy and 407 Fairing Filler. West System recommends that after having fared a surface with a fairing filler that you then seal that surface with a couple of coats of epoxy to protect the fairing compound from moisture. If I had enough time, that is exactly what I would do. But given the fact that I am out of time, I'm just going to be relying on the primer to do that job. And that should be perfectly okay, provided I can build up a thick enough layer. Unlike 105, this primer does have a very pungent smell to it. So out comes the safety gear.
This should take care of both the smell and also maybe spare a couple of brain cells. Most annoyingly, I've only got this tiny container for mixing paint. So it looks like I will only be mixing up eight centimeters worth of base and two centimeters worth of hardener. As the astute will have noted, the ratio between hardener and base is one to four. Once mixed, I think I have a pot life of around six to eight hours, so there's certainly no rush there. Enough yammering on and enough prep work already. Jeez. Cue the painting time lapse. Done with the first coat that is, but look at it, it looks awesome. If this is not worth a teeny tiny little thumbs up and maybe a comment down below to say good job, well then I don't know what is. I would love to show you guys the forward end of the cabin top, but I've kind of painted myself in a corner here. I can't really get aboard the boat, but so far I've found no major mistakes. This is awesome. Okay, this is gonna be super janky, but ta-da! Does that not look spiffy to the umpteen degree? It's getting kind of late and I'm way behind my usual Sunday schedule for publishing these videos, so I'd better 23 skidoo out of here and get busy editing. But before I end this video, I just want to mention that the stickers I mentioned earlier in the video are only available on Patreon for the next two weeks. So if you want to get in on that, head over to patreon.com slash saylife. And other than that, I hope to see you guys back next weekend for application of top code. Ooh, exciting. Okay. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.